Very good. Okay. Um, well, you remember, I'm sure, that uh, right after 9-11, uh, George W. Bush uh, uh, made a speech in which he had a kind of a plaintive plea. He asked, uh, why do they hate us? And his answer was, they hate our freedom, uh, uh, our uh, initiative, and all the wonderful things about our society. Well, actually, he, uh, shortly after that, the Pentagon uh, uh, ran, uh, did a, uh, organized a study by the Defense Science Board to answer the question of why do they hate us, responding to Bush. Right. And they said, it's not that they hate our freedom, it's that we hate their freedom. Uh, they hate our policies, they don't hate us. Uh, they hate the policies that we've been carrying out, he went through them. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, to its credit, did a poll uh, right at about the same time of just of Muslims, but only the kind that they're interested in, the ones with uh, bankers, professionals, people embedded in the, the U.S. Uh, uh, international global economic system and so on. And uh, they, they, asked, you know, they investigated their attitudes about the United States. And of course, they're not opposed to the neoliberal system. They're part of it. They're not opposed to the, the capitalist imperial structure. They're part of it. Uh, what they said is that they're opposed to uh, two things primarily. Uh, one, the sanctions against Iraq, which had killed hundreds of thousands of people and just devastated the society. Right. Uh, we're so close to genocidal that the two international diplomats who, respected diplomats who presided over them, presided over the Oil for Food program, uh, Dennis Halliday and Hans von Sponek, uh, they actually both resigned in protest wow. because they said they're violating the genocide conventions. And, and the other thing was the treatment of the Palestinians, uh, the U.S. support for Israeli oppression of the Palestinians. Wow. Uh, so that's why they didn't hate us, but that's what they're opposed to. That's what they're and opposed to. And in fact, uh, Bush wasn't the first president to ask, why do they hate us? Uh, what the press should have reported is that uh, Dwight Eisenhower, when he was president, asked the same question. Hmm. He asked his it's all declassified years ago. Uh, he asked his staff, uh, why is there a campaign of hatred against us among the Arab people? Not the governments, they're fine, but the pop, the people, why, why, why is there a campaign of hatred against us? And right at the same time, the National Security Council, the main planning body, it came out with a study about this. Uh, it, uh, uh, again, long declassified. And what it concluded is that, uh, it's almost quoting, they said, there's a perception in the Arab world that the United States <coughs> supports dictatorships yeah. and uh, repression and blocks democracy and development and uh, uh, that we do it because we want to gain control of their oil supplies. Yeah. And I went on to say that the perception is more or less accurate and furthermore that's what we ought to be doing. Uh -huh. uh, now going back to the Wall Street Journal, 2001 survey of moneyed Muslims as they called them, uh, they repeated that too. They said, the problem is, the, apart from the particular cases that I mentioned, the U.S. supports dictatorships, uh, harsh, brutal repression, blocks democracy and development, and we do it because we want to maintain control of their resources. Now, this happened under Eisenhower. Eisenhower, uh, it was under his clock that we uh, invaded Iran and was, overthrew Mohammed Mossadegh. Yeah, uh, but that wasn't one of the issues that uh, the national... That Party wasn't... That was in general. I mean, that's just one of it. Yes, we support right. dictatorship in Iran, but everywhere else too. You know, I want to cover a lot of elementary truths that'll keep the people going. And, and there's something we've talked about in the past. You said Afghanistan, and uh, that uh, Afghanistan women had a right to vote before uh, women in the United States. About the same time, maybe uh, a year or two before. Wow. What happened from there? Nine, in the 19, early 1920s. Uh, I forgot the exact date, but right. the early 1920s. Wow, that's just, a, it's remarkable that something like that could be... Uh, well, we went a uh, long time after the Declaration of Independence before women were 
regarded as authentic people. Right, right. And in fact, you know, women's rights are, are still an issue of a struggle. It was since the 70s and the 80s yeah. that there was a great expansion of women's rights. You know, um, it seems like uh, we're, since I saw you last, the Occupy movement started. And now they seem to be uh, coming down on that. And not only that, but this, uh, the thing that scares me uh, is, and uh, as, uh, as we talk today, I don't believe that it's uh, been signed or vetoed yet is Senate Bill 1867, the way it stands now, which would say uh, basically that they can take anybody, anytime, um, for no reason and hold them indefinitely. Now, Obama said uh, he'd veto it, but I'm not sure if he's going to veto it. Uh, well, actually, that's the, that's the way it came across at first. And it did elicit a lot of uh, discussion, internet and other discussion. However, the Senate watered it down. But not much, but they can still do that technically because well, they said exists. Technically, existed. they could always have done it. Right. But, so what it effectively did, it appears, so far, where it stands now is it sort of reinforces existing law, which is pretty awful. The Patriot Act. Basically. The Patriot Act and other legislation which uh, implements it. So you don't think they'll come, uh, if, if this law passes, because I see that people are getting frightened already, and they ought to be frightened of, what's, of the law, not frightened to stand up to it. Um, it's, I, I keep a close eye on it, because yeah. it looks as if right now that, they, that the senators who initiated it uh, have backed off and have said that it will not change existing law. But existing law is bad enough. Existing, existing law, law bad does enough? permit uh, uh, indefinite permanent detention yeah. of uh, so far non-citizens, but uh, not much, to, you know, they were already, Obama's already authorized murder of American citizens, so detention yeah. of them wouldn't be much farther. Right. And however, this, uh, I, I wouldn't, I think focusing on this particular law is a, a little misleading. It's the existing body of law and practice that's the real danger. And this is maybe moving it a little bit farther, but not much. Yeah, it is a step in that direction. It's 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 scary. I mean, didn't and Eisenhower? You mentioned before. I mean, it is it is farewell address to the nation. He said, in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of power, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. Now we had half of our spending going toward the military, and here we are having to cut back, cut back, cut back, and all that money to be spent. And um, you know, we certainly don't seem to be heeding his words. It's expanding, in fact. Yeah. Obama just uh, is now sending Marines to Australia. They're, yep. The US they want to set a base a, up there. Yep. Set, Down we there. We have quite a few bases in Australia. This would be a new one, obviously aimed at China. The, uh, yeah. uh, they're building a base in South Korea, J Jeju Island. There's big protests about that on the island, but looks like the United States and South Korea will build a major naval base there, also aimed at China. Uh, and this is uh, you know, building up for a potential conflict, which mm. is... Uh, now, Russia and China aren't too happy with us. Oh, no. With, and, and maybe that balance of power is, is what's needed. <laughs> the Occupy movement. It's mostly the, the one part of it I don't like is that the one percent. I think that one percent that we've talked about this, it really should be subdivided into like one tenth of one percent. Uh, but other than that, um, it's an interesting time right now. It seems like they're trying to wait. You know, they're trying to put more pressure on on their end, and the people are trying to put more pressure. On, uh, like last time we talked and I said dissent was fine. I said, no, not dissent, frustration. Well, now it's dis dissent. You know, it has led to that next step last that we talked about. We talked was before this. Before right, this right before. Yeah. It must well, have, yeah. This is a pretty remarkable development. I mean, it's yeah. late, too late, I think, and, but great that it's happening. It's uh, the first major popular reaction to uh, over a generation, over 30 years of. Uh, really a pretty violent attack on the population. Yeah. If you take a look at what's happened in the last 30 years, it's a bitter class war. Uh, 
the economy shifted pretty dramatically towards finance and uh, deindustrialization, offshoring of production. Uh, the effects were uh, numerous. One was the very high concentration of wealth. As you say, it's the top one-tenth of one percent is wildly overweighting the distribution. And for the, for the rest of the population, you know, the 99 percent, it's symbolically for the large majority, it's yeah. a stagnation or decline. It's crazy. I heard on the radio up that, that on the way up here that they uh, said one out of four children is hungry in the United States. Yeah. It's a very severe period. Uh, unemployment, real unemployment, is essentially at depression levels. And there's a difference. Uh, during the Depression, which I'm old enough to remember, uh, uh, unemployed uh, working people, most of my family in fact, uh, had a realistic expectation at least after the mid-30s, that uh, things would get better. There are things you can do about it. The CIO was organizing, the, the WPA was functioning, the, uh, there was a general hopefulness. Things will come back, we'll get over this, we'll work together and get over it. It's not true now. No, it's not things true. are on their present course, those jobs are not coming back. I don't see how they can get them back. They, they got us involved in these trade agreements and uh, well, they, it, they it can just... get them back, but they don't... Well, they could, them. but I mean, not with the way that... Uh, no, if, I mean, if you still have puppets, like, for instance, Levin, who uh, who uh, co-sponsored, or I think he, he may have even written it up and then and McCain... Uh, well, anyway, he and McCain were in on this, uh, uh, you know, throwing in this amendment uh, along with the National Defense Authorization Act. And uh, but Levin's, Levin's or Levin rather is uh, I interviewed somebody in Michigan who's running against him for Senate in 2002, and I mean he he's all, everybody donates to him. He had hogged all the corporate money, and I mean he he's owned. And for these business people to be making decisions like this, and now uh, Newt Gingrich is going to go ahead and ask uh, Donald Trump. I was glad that even Fox TV was mocking them. I mean, even the next two people, they were merciless. I was, I was surprised. Now, this was 5 in the morning. Maybe this is a little different as 5 in the morning. Like, when I was introduced to you in <laughs> Manufacturing Consent, uh, Noam Chomsky in the media, it was in the middle of the night. You know, sometimes they do give you a, a bit of the truth. They throw it out there. And then they, but they don't leave it up for very long. And, well, uh, they, you know, they, I mean, mocking Gingrich for saying we'll bring in businessmen is a kind of a joke. Uh, yeah. who, who doesn't? Exactly. Mean, well, he made it sound like he was being uh, unique in so doing, or no, that his party was unique in so doing, and that's not true. Take, Both parties. Let me take a look at uh, Obama's uh, economic team. It's uh, mm -hmm. all people from the Rubin gang coming straight out of the financial sector, uh, not just... The ones who were responsible for a yeah. lot of the, the troubles we're in now, right? I mean, they, uh, they basically the guys who uh, brought about the crisis were uh, called in to put band-aids on it. And uh, not too surprisingly, the uh, proposals that they came up with uh, greatly benefited the, uh, uh, the big banks and investment firms who were uh, responsible for the crisis, and the rest of the population was left to uh, um, um, fly in the wind. Right. Actually, the, the original TARP legislation, if you look at it, was a bargain. Uh, it was going to be a, the legislation calls for uh, a bailing out the banks, but also giving relief for the victims, the victims of subprime mortgages, foreclosures, and so on. They were supposed to be compensated and supported. Well, only the first half of that legislation was ever implemented. Yeah. Actually, the Inspector General, of uh, who's in charge of it, wrote about it later very angrily. So it was, uh, and uh, the, the bailout is only a small part of it. Uh, less talked about is the huge amount, probably trillions of dollars, of uh, cheap loans, which are basically gifts to the, uh, uh, to the Goldman Sachs and others. Like, if somebody lends if you can take out a loan at some very low interest rate and you can turn that money into treasury securities where you get a higher interest rate, you can get quite rich. It doesn't take a genius to do it, and that's essentially the way it was done. Hmm. Now, getting back to the, the job situation um, and, and just the inefficiency of the country, uh, 
the cannabis issue, again, has been... Uh, actually, even the, the governor of New Jersey the other day was saying that the drug war had failed. I mean, this is an inefficiency we cannot afford. I, I brought this up before. We have over 800,000 arrests for possession of a plant every year. And um, meanwhile, like some 800,000 kids go missing. Well, obviously, the, the, our resources are being wasted. Uh, but, you know, chasing people for, uh, you know, the, the basically the propaganda that of Harry Anslinger, which is really where it all originated from. Uh, that's just an inefficiency and really a, a horrible thing. I mean, people thrown in cages. Uh, that's, it's not, uh, I mean, I was in the healing arts. It doesn't make sense to me that we would harm innocent people for what they do. Is that the land of, of liberty? That's... Uh, well, this is the same 30 plus years. Uh, the uh, incarceration rate in the United States in 1980 yep. was roughly the same as uh, other industrial countries, mm -hmm. slightly toward the high end, but within the spectrum. Uh, since then, it's just shot up every president. It's now five to ten times as high, uh, uh, and it's mostly victimless crimes. Uh, yeah, that, yep, it's crazy. It's and it's also very... It's established Flash. what some call a new Jim Crow. It's targeting African Americans, Hispanics, uh, mostly males. Uh, mostly, uh, yeah. it's, it's sort of, uh, you know, putting, it's essentially reconstituting something like the imprisonment system for African Americans that was instituted after the Civil War. After the Civil War, there were about 10 years of relative freedom. And then there was a North-South Compact, which effectively allowed the South to criminalize black life wow. and put the population back into jail. And that's yeah. where they went. They became another slave labor force. That went on until the Second World War. Well, what do you think? I mean, here we have this Occupy movement. Um, I would like to see, I know we don't agree with Ron Paul on every issue, but my goodness, as far as foreign policy, I mean, he even, you know, even discussed that... Uh, we invaded Iran in 1953. He's talked about the, the, you know, the foundations as to why they're mad at us, and he was booed off the stage. And I'm worried that last time Fox took him off. Uh, Fox took him out of the debates. Now I heard some other, uh, some, um, I forget what Israeli word is. Somebody who wanted to take him out of a debate and uh, said he had nothing to offer and. Uh, uh, you know, so you still have this sense of sh I mean, he he he'd been doing well in the straw poll. I mean, and uh, he really. I, I I hope that you know. I, I mean, I've actually had people write me and say, you know, we're worried that uh, he maybe shouldn't take any small craft or anything. While well, you know, and and you just, in other words, they're worried for his life as far as him really uh, uh, pushing the line like this. And I don't think that that should be the case. There should be somebody that would pop up right after him if enough people were saying the same thing. Well, as I said, the, uh, the Pentagon said the same thing. They said right. they hate us because they hate our policies. I mean, somebody running for uh, president. I mean, yeah, if... Actually, it's just a big flap right now about an American ambassador in Belgium who pointed out what every specialist on uh, the region knows, every reader of the newspapers ought to know. That the that he uh, talked about Israel's increasing isolation, yeah, and he said it's a result of the kind of policies they're following. That's going to lead to isolation. It'll lead to uh, uh, anger at Israel. It's not anti-Semitism, but it'll be called anti-Semitism. That's what they do. Uh, he came under a huge attack. Uh, the Obama administration is now under congressional pressure to withdraw him for daring to say what's a truism. Uh, international relations truism. So, I mean, we could deal with... Uh, uh, even Panetta came under attack when he uh, deplored uh, Israel's increasing isolation, which is, which is, of course, the case, but can't say it. You know. It's just... There's uh, a catechism that you have to keep to. Well, I hope that some of these things, like, like we've talked about before, uh, well, even the leading uh, the statement or the, uh, um, the introduction statement, which is a quote by yours, that we live entangled in webs of endless deceit in a highly indoctrinated society where elementary truths uh, are easily buried. These are these are our truths. And it's funny about this, this Senate 1867. The media had buried that story. 
and it seemed to be unearthed of all by the Obama administration. They're the ones that said, well, we might veto this, and then it kind of came out more that it was even there. And there was also a good deal of popular protest. I don't know how much. Oh, yeah, that had a factor, too. But as far as the media not being able to uh, ignore it, I mean, when the president does something, you know, when he says something, they can't ignore it as easily. So that's why if somebody who, uh, like Ron Paul, were to get in there, um, uh, people who are, are uh, um, supporters of his, I, I mentioned the wall. You know, I mean, come on, he wants to he wants to stop foreign aid. We have <laughs> we need to, you know, I mean, kids are starving and, and or dying of preventable causes at the rate of a thousand an hour, at least. You know, and they're just discarded every day. We can't really. I mean, if we were to cut into the military budget instead of spending more, more than the rest of the world combined, we'd have enough money to save some of these children. And if we and if we uh, you know legalized uh, marijuana that would do away with some of our inefficiency here, the hemp is it could be sort of so many products. And I live in uh, an area that used to be uh, big in the textiles. It's just one closed plant after another because all that went overseas. However, that land there, even my doctor said he's looked into it and it's it's perfect for hemp, and uh, that could that could add so much. So I mean, here we are. We're at this tipping point. That's what uh, Edgar Mitchell said. Uh, you know that, that you know we're at a tipping point, and uh, and it's not clear which way it's going to go. But we are the ones who are going to determine which way it's going to go, and it's up to us. And that's how we did it to the audience when I was uh, uh, talking. Well, we're, we're really the, uh, exciting aspect of the Occupy movement. It's becoming a kind of a, what could be a cutting edge of mass popular action which would shift the direction in which the country is going. And there's not a lot of time to do it. There's not a lot there of time are, to do it. Um, there are issues that are not discussed, barely, barely even mentioned in the press, which are the, some of the most important issues in history. Now, for example, just, just last, in the last month, the uh, U.S. Department of Energy came out with uh, its report on emissions for 2010, the last year that they have data on emissions, spectacular rise, the largest ever. In fact, the level of emi emissions is now worse than the worst case scenario, scenario uh, estimated by the International Commission, the IPCC, International Commission of Scientists. They gave a range of possible uh, uh, scenarios some very alarmist, some mild. This is worse than the most alarmist. That's yeah. just the beginning. A couple of days later, the International Energy Association, which is not a radical body that was formed on the initiative of Henry Kissinger, all the oil companies are in it and so on, they came out with their estimate, and their conclusion was that in five years at the current rate, it may be irreversible. And, uh, so we're coming to the point, yeah, they yeah, said, yeah. where within five years the uh, global emissions, which of course are substantially human created, uh, will reach the, uh, the, the, the danger point that's been set, two, two degrees centigrade uh, right. rise in temperature. That may be the irre irreversible point. We may reach it in five years. Right. Uh, that's pretty serious. Yeah. And. Uh, at the same time, the huge effort made to increase use of fossil fuels. I mean, when you read about it, they, they tell you that uh, China is the main villain, and technically their emissions are slightly above ours by now. Uh, but they also have, uh, what, three or four times the population? Well, it's a, much more than that. but. Uh, so per capita it's much less, but there's another point that's barely discussed. Uh, the emissions in China are basically coming from, uh, much of it, we don't know how much, is coming from Western investment. So when Apple uh, produces your iPhone and Foxconn under hideous working conditions, yeah, people those know. are called Chinese emissions, but it's U.S. investment. And in well, fact, China is pretty much an assembly plant for uh, uh, the, the advanced industrial countries. Uh, the ones on its periphery, Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, uh, they have uh, 
a, a positive trade balance with China because they're providing the parts and the components, the advanced technology that's being assembled in China. Uh, we're doing it too. Uh, Dell, Apple, uh, uh, Motorola, you know, any number of companies are producing in China. And those are called Chinese emissions, but it's U.S. investments. Same with Europe. Wow. So if you did a real analysis of this, an honest analysis, it would look quite different. Uh, the developed countries are uh, far, uh, uh, far more responsible for the uh, destructive emissions, which may be the end of viable existence. We don't know. I mean, well, that's the thing. As far as this, uh, those emails and the, and that, uh, you know, as far as there's a lot of people who are trying to refute that it's even happening. I mean, the Earth's warming. They're saying, okay, it's warming. We know this. But it's not caused by humans, and it's just. I mean, it's, I mean, some of these people are going to watch this video, like, so. Uh, you know, it's kind of like believing in a flat Earth. <laughs> and, yeah. And it's not just you know if there's some people doing it, okay, who cares? But what's really significant is that a couple of years ago, the uh, in energy-intensive industries and the big business lobbies like the Chamber of Commerce quite openly announced that they're initiating a major propaganda campaign to try to convince people that this is not a problem and that it that they're uh, and that's had an effect you take a look at polls actually just another thing that happened last month is that an international polls came out uh, asking people all over the world about their attitudes on these things well uh, almost everywhere people want much more uh, action on the part of their governments to do something about it even in the United States. But the United States is much substantially lower in concern than other countries. Uh, and the disbelief in the overwhelming scientific consensus is uh, 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 disbelief is higher and considerably higher in the United States and elsewhere. Uh, that's a consequence of the massive business propaganda campaigns. Wow. The, uh, so, you know, some individuals say, it, well, okay, who cares, but uh, when the major business lobbies and the major uh, energy industries are doing it, that's serious. That's hard to get out of. Exactly. You know, Bev sent something. Uh, and I should mention, yeah. when the media discuss this, they uh, present what they call balance. So on one side are, you know, overwhelming majority of scientists. On the other side are a couple of skeptics. And missing entirely are the much larger group of scientists who do dissent from the consensus because they think it's not it's not uh, alarmist enough. For example, right here at MIT, there's a climate study uh, group, scientists, public policy people, very sophisticated people. I mean, their analyses are far more alarmist than the international consensus. Wow. But they're not part of the debate, and, and many others like them. There are lots of them. Well, this thing that, that uh, Bev posted, I didn't even get to see it, but he told me about it on the way. I guess some uh, young adolescent girl got to speak to the UN and said, you know, you're messing up our world. I mean, if I'm going to have kids and this and that, this is our world that you're messing up here. That, you know, they're putting profit over people. And, uh, you know, so out of the, you know, here's just this young person who understands more and, and people are just, they, they're so busy. They write you sometimes, they go, Ken, you know, I understand this and stuff, but I'm so busy just trying to uh, make ends meet. And a lot, of it, a lot of what they're busy with, too, are games. On Facebook, there's all these games. They have all these distractions, plus television has so many distractions. And, um, yeah, I think that that's how they go for it. We're actually but, playing a game now with the decent survival of our grandchildren. Yeah, children. the real game. Yeah. The real game. And it's uh, amazing the way it's, it's kind of like lemmings walking off a cliff. Exactly. Well, I'm hoping that uh, we can steer lemmings away. <laughs> and I'm hoping that the Occupy movement gets a little bit involved in elections. Oh, my God. I bought a site. I, I used to always think I, if I had the right website, I don't know. But I had OccupyElections.us, which I might do something with. But I really think that people need to be behind and know that they've been censoring our elections. That's what I've been documenting since 2000. I hope they don't do it again with Paul. Um, what is your... It, well, he doesn't have a chance of doing it. You don't, he doesn't, you he think doesn't, have, any, he doesn't have any business support. 
but he has a lot of a lot of great. I mean, he's been doing well in the straw the straw polls yeah, and but whatnot. That's irrelevant. If you want to run an American election, American elections are bought so far. But we could, if we're going to change, you could change it, but you need a really mass movement. That's what I'm trying to hope the the Occupy movement would. Well, it's you know it's nowhere near the scale where it could. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I have for us too, but. If you think about electoral impact, uh, it's far from being able to uh, get involved in a three billion dollar election. But if people understood what we're talking about today, they could. They they could. Yeah. We could if enough of us put forth the effort. And you're saying that we really probably should yeah, keep on keep it on, even if he even if he signs this bill. We, we those of us who've been speaking out should keep on keep it on, right? Yeah, but it's, that's undoubtedly true, and it has an impact. But if you want to be serious about elections, there are a couple of things you have to bear in mind. For one thing, if you, even if you could elect your own president, you know, pick your favorite state, yeah. elect him president, uh, you got to work it Wouldn't make any difference. Well, uh, because you know you need uh, you need senators, you need representatives, you need governors, you need uh, the investors. The, you have to have control over investment decisions, over what happens to capital. I mean, that's a long struggle. Not, not. It's the right struggle, but you have to recognize. But if you had a president in there, he would have, or she would have, airtime. Number one, and plus, I'm saying when I say occupy elections, I mean what I've been saying all along. I've, I've interviewed congressional candidates and the Senate candidates as well, because I mean that's the, you know, both houses of Congress. You really need to have some people there who are standing for us, who aren't bought. I mean, it, you know, wasn't human right that. Uh, um, you know, nothing appears more surprising to those who consider human affairs with a philosophical eye than the easiness with which the many are governed by the few. We still outnumber them. They, I think with effort, if we recruited enough effort, and if we could it get this... It certainly be tried, but we shouldn't underestimate the scale and character of what has to be done. Right. It's a long, it's hard be struggle. It's putting somebody in office, even if you could do it, which you can't, wouldn't change anything. Well, unless we've got people in those other offices. Unless, too. Yeah, but that's a big job. And it should be done. It Actually, be that's done. one thing the right wing understood. Uh, they began their organizing with uh, school boards, local representatives, uh, wow. and so on. And yeah, that's the way to build up a, uh, an electoral uh, a movement. Well, let's hope things cook in the next year. I yeah. think we're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks again. Huh?